So I, I'm asked uh, from time to time when people ask about our church, what is your music like? Are y'all a contemporary church or a traditional church? And so it kind of feels like when, when we were children, I guess, kind of through our like growing up years, those became kind of two categories for churches, the contemporary church and the traditional church. What did people mean by that, A, and is that where we still are, or do we kind of need to change the way that we talk about worship, and worship music in particular? Yeah, it's a great question. I I do think in some ways we've moved kind of beyond those categories. So you you had this time where particularly in kind of mainline traditional denominations where you had, you know, the, the typical worship was a traditional worship. And what was meant by that is we do hymns. Uh, we have very limited um, instrumentation, so a lot of organ or strings kind of gearing towards kind of a more classical understanding of music. And then, you know, you had this period where... All acoustic instrumentation, I guess. Like, yeah. piano was okay. Yep, yep. piano was okay. Acoustic yeah, guitar was right on the edge. They were acceptable still, yeah, and yeah, not yeah. acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Kettle yeah. drums. <laughs> Out. Uh, so then you had this time in kind of church history where, you know, this younger generation came up and realized, like, oh, wow, we can, you know, play songs of worship to the Lord in styles that we like, right? And, and so you had these, you, you know, introduced acoustic guitars, and then you introduced electric guitars, right, and yeah. heaven forbid, drums, you yeah. know, you bring yeah, I mean, drums in. And so I guess that was kind of an era where people called it, like, the worship wars uh, yeah. time. Yeah. And so... But we, I wouldn't say that we're still in that today. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Matt? Yeah, so uh, something I referenced earlier was like Martin Luther quote, history is like a drunk man going from one ditch to the other, back and forth, you know, cor- correcting itself. And I, I think that the good thing about what what was the contemporary sort of worship movement was that it was a reaction to a, a sort of detached and, and many times kind of almost performance-oriented uh, style of worship. And so the contemporary kind of came in, you know, Matt Raymond, Heart of Worship, it, well, even before that with sort of vineyard stuff, but, um, you know, and, and passion. Um, but you, you came in with this uh, much more um, tangible, accessible expression that, you know, it, it was more, it was more um, empathetic to people. You know, you, you, you'd like, it made sense. Uh, the the language wasn't all King James. It was it was uh, you instantly got it, um, and it was it was exciting. It was exciting. more emotive too. Yeah, it was yeah, more, yeah. It was yeah, it was exciting. It was it was emotive, and so it it did uh, many good things. I mean it, that correction wasn't was a needed one. Well, and it, what's funny is it just how history repeats itself. Like the Protestant Reformation, a significant part of that was the exact same thing, right? They were right. they saw the Catholic Church and it become so separate from the congregation actually being able to participate. Right. You had guys like Isaac Watts being a great example of of saying, no, we need to be able to these, these things need to be accessible to the congregation so that we can Using actually participate. The organ was a big yep. deal. Yep. Uh, yeah. Or even just, you know, kind of the total whitewashing of the church like Zwingli, like it it was, if you will, like an overreaction to uh, any sort of emotive or there was, you know, there was, they were, they were iconoclast, a lot of the reformers. So there's no imagery. Um, but what's interesting to me, kind of to your point, Matt, about like the drunk man, um, you know, I think what's kind of happened is like, you have like one kind of performance, which is the traditional type of performance with kettle drums and choir robes and that kind of thing. And then you have another kind of performance with like smoke machines and lasers or whatever. And both are kind of critiquing the other for being too performancey while they don't realize that they themselves are pretty performancey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and what you're describing there, the, the latter, the smoke machines and all that kind of where we are now, that that's kind of where the, the extreme got, you know, or, or, you know, I don't know how much further it goes or if it goes further or if it comes back. But, but yeah, the, what started as a, a really good response, um, you know, kind of in many cases led to this overcooked uh, kind of emotional pr- experience production, uh, you know, almost too tangible, too accessible, um, 
too commercial, perhaps, you know, use that kind of language, I guess. But, but you know, yeah, again, it, it just paints that extreme. Yeah. So kind of give me some categories as to, like, where we are right now. What are the types of, how would you kind of categorize worship or musical worship right now in kind of the modern American church? Yeah, I think you do have, so there's this one category, to Matt's point, of um, an emphasis or priority of experience, right? And so the, the intention is we're going to use everything possible to try to create an experience. And, and so, you know, even our, the Sunday service are, that's the way they're framed, right? We want you to experience God. They this is the worship, the worship experience. experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, it's not a bad thing, but it's that's just that's the emphasis. If we can get people to through the lights and the production and the you know things kind of supporting the songs, um, then then we've we've been successful. Then you have this other camp of kind of the tried and true. Uh, we don't want to kind of exist on the whims of what may be popular in our culture. We want to be careful about how much we use those things. Um, but still this category of excellence. And so we have this uh, more, let's look back to the past. Let's do hymns. Let's double down on what historically has, you know, stood the test of time. And so it tends to, tends to be, more didactic, right? Yeah. right? That it, it's primarily appealing to these are the words of God to us. We're, let, you know, we're trying to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And so we want to we want to do hymns that kind of spell out in, you know, detail the theology that we say we believe in. Yeah. Right. No, that's really good. I, I listen to this conversation. I, I think that the question that we need to be asking is how are we serving God's church in the music we write, in the services that we kind of organize or conduct, because I do think there's a tendency, as I think what both of y'all are saying, to organize around, well, we're not that, right? And so um, more than just like, how are we actually considering the people that are coming, that we're trying to serve? It's, you know, I think to your point, Matt, like there was a disconnected traditional service and people said, we're not that. And so you kind of got like the vineyard movement or whatever that was very, very different from that. I do think that kind of like became, again, it became kind of like people like this. And what else are they like? Oh, they like U2 concerts. Maybe we can make it more like that. So that, there might have been a positive influence there too, but it, it did feel a little reactionary. And then I also feel like right now you can have services that are, well, we don't want to be like a U2 concert. And so how can we make this as like dirgy and, you know, kind of... Un, uninteresting, or, uninspiring. Yeah, unaccess- it can be unaccessible the other way, right? And so, um, so yeah, what are, those, what are those things that as we're, like, writing songs, as we're, uh, you know, trying to think through, okay, we have a worship service coming up, how should we think, what, are the, what should the goals in mind be as we try to serve God's church? Yeah, I mean, I think those are great questions. Um, you know the extremes that we've we've pointed out. I think it's you know it's important to note that 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 those points of extreme are hold hold a large amount of truth. You know they they contain a r- real reflection of who God is and of wh- how God is supposed to be worshipped um, in each category in each camp. You know in the in the church as a whole, you look at it. You know and so um, you know I I think we should have a goal to you know Jesus. A paradigm he gave was spirit and truth, right? That 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 sort of elusive combination that's so hard to to get at, but is what we should aim for. Is was is an incredibly you know rich you know intellectual, um, profoundly true worship service, and one that connects with with real life human hearts, you know, a daily struggle and 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 all of that. And and then one other point, I guess one thing that I think we've kind of hinted at. The, in, in the conversation that's really hard to do, I think, is in either camp, be it traditional or, I guess, contemporary or however you want to categorize it, what, what, is, what is hard, but I, I think it's something we should strive for, is, um, you know, when you get in those extremes, you get to the performance kind of orientation where, you know, it gets detached and, you know, all that. But to, to aim for excellence while still having a corporate gathering 
um, is really important to do and, and to reach as far as we can in excellence and as high as we can. You know, I think about the old like cathedrals and what they, what the, the beauty and the, you know, so like it's not a, it's not, we should, it's not a, a, a stiff arm to excellence. It's, it's holding those two always in tension. Like how can we be as excellent as possible and still, um, have a service that is that is corporate engaging to the entire body and not a performance uh, this it, it takes a lot of wisdom yeah that's really that's that's really i i like the cathedral as kind of a category right because the cathedral has this transcendence about it it's not overly folksy it's not folksy at all obviously but it only works when the people come in like it invites you in um and so yeah so i don't know any thoughts on that i think that's a really good kind of visual at least for me as I think about planning worship services yeah so I think I mean I just want to echo Matt's point about it's very easy to critique other people and and see you know how they're doing this wrong and this wrong but you know hopefully at at root of all these things we're all trying to honor the Lord and like Matt said there is a large amount of truth in these things I think where we need to be careful is we tend to drift you know if we don't if we don't have something that's tethering us we tend to kind of drift into, you know, these things. And, and so I just want to echo that point. But yeah, I think that our goal, you know, as we think about the gathering as uh, our lives as worshipers, um, worship by definition is me ascribing some, you know, greatness to something, right? I can self-worship, but in this context, it's we're seeking to worship God, <laughs> right? Our temptation is to rely upon something to to worship God rather than seeing God as the object of of our our worship our adoration our you know worship of him glorifying him honoring him and and so I think that's what we have to be careful of right that I begin to rely upon the huge production that I begin to rely upon the organ or this particular worship leader or this particular preacher or the music or the style or you know any other thing other than like I think what needs to center us is that we are worshiping a God who is greater than we can imagine right? right but then to Matt's point if we have that in view if that's our conviction and goal then offering our lives as worship includes me as a musician and as a song leader and, you know, even the congregation, like we are all seeking to worship God as excellently as we can. Sure, yeah. Right? God does care about the way that we worship him. Is it ultimately perfected by Jesus? Yes. But that, you know, just like in our lives, that doesn't mean we kind of give these half-hearted efforts, right? We are trying to use the gifts that God's given us in, in music and beautiful, you know, uh, l- l- lyrics. And, you know, we're seeking to craft our services in a beautiful way. Not, not the end in and of itself being beauty, but it's that we are honoring this glorious God. And we yeah. want to do that in an excellent way. Yeah, I think that that's, I mean, that's some really, really helpful thoughts. I mean, one of the things that's coming to mind as you were talking, just, I guess, our thoughtfulness or awareness in worship is so important. Um, you know, as a kid, you know, a lot of my family's Catholic, and so I went to a lot of Catholic Masses as a child. And I, I because I wasn't going, like, every week to Catholic Mass, I was, you know, I wasn't, like, one of the people that always knew exactly when to stand and sit and everything to say back. Um, but I knew it just enough to like be comfortable, but still like it was, had some gravity and I had to think about it. So it was actually somewhat meaningful to me. Whereas like, I think a lot of people that were kind of doing that every week, they, they were kind of doing a charade that they just knew to do when they went into this room, because that was that, you know, Matt and I were talking a few weeks ago, I was watching kind of one of the, you know, more performancey kind of worship styles. And there was a, a, a woman on stage who was singing and like immediately, like it was like they were they were they were like announcing like where the bathrooms were and then like the music started and she just like went into this like and it was just like this immediate thing and it was like it didn't feel genuine at all it felt like okay she's learned an act and maybe it was I mean uh, you know it's easy to be critical like you said but it just kind of felt like okay she's kind of doing the same ritual that she's just kind of learned in that setting as like the Catholic is doing that they've learned in that setting and you know, in both cases, it's easy to actually thoughtlessly think, you know, participate in what you're doing. So, yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good thought. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? Um, like, what, what is Christ's covenant's goal? 
Well, I like, I kind of like to call it in, in short, high church meets house church. I like that. Uh, high church meets house church. Yeah, which uh, it, but it, it embodies a lot of like the ideas that we're talking about, right? High church being transcendence, house church being eminence. You know, the the high church representing the the beauty and try, striving for excellence. The house church representing you can you can do it with a stadium, or you can do you know you can do it with a tiny group of people and and sing and have a, a real emotional experience encounter with with uh, the living God in in an o- awkward or normal kind of setting. You know. I really love, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've used the phrase before, like our our boldness to come before the Lord when we gather does not equal casualness, right? Like that, and, and that speaks to kind of the high church versus house church. Like we, we, there is a sense of the transcendence and glory of God that leads us to humbly come to him. Um, now, we can do that boldly, right? We can do that without a performance. We can do that without making sure, you know, making sure that everything is perfect and we, it's scripted. And yeah, you know, now the, the Spirit's working in this gathering of people and it's about the participation and edification of these people. But you know, we, want, we want to keep those things, uh, hold them together. Mm, that's really good. That's so helpful. So when people ask me, are you a contemporary church or a traditional church, I kind of just want to say we're really bad at both of those things, um, but maybe echo some of what y'all just said here. I mean, we, we want our worship services to connect people to a transcendent God, but to be accessible enough that there's not a division between the stage and the people, but we're, we're inviting people into uh, what we pray and hope that God is going to do in their lives. So thanks for the discussion, guys. This is really, really helpful. Thank you for uh, watching. So for Matt Papa, Jordan Coughlin, I'm Jason Dees, and I appreciate you tuning in to this discussion about modern worship.